This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. So let's talk about white balance. And I didn't realize that my approach might be weird until I was talking to my friend Neil James the other day. And he's a podcaster and a fellow photographer. And we were talking about white balance. I can't even remember why it came up, but I just said to him, oh, I, I never use auto white balance in my camera. And he didn't seem surprised by that, but he asked me, well, does that mean that you change the white balance in your camera based on whatever scene you happen to walk into, what the lighting conditions actually are? And that's when the penny dropped. I said, no, the white balance in my camera actually never changes. It always stays on exactly the same setting. The truth is that on every camera I own, whether I use it for shooting stills or for shooting video, the white balance is always set to 5500 Kelvin and I never change it. And I realized from listening to Neil's response, that might be quite an odd thing to do. So I had to go back and think to myself, why did I do that? Why did I start doing that back at the beginning and why have I stuck with that through the years? What's the reasoning behind it? So I thought I'd make this video to share that reasoning with you. Now I'm not for a minute suggesting that my way of doing things is the way to do things. I mean, Neil's response already clued me in on the fact that I might be a little bit odd in this regard, but I thought I'd still make this video and share that reasoning with you, my why for how I approach white balance. And even if you decide that my approach isn't for you, hopefully this video will get you thinking about what white balance is and how it's actually affecting your images when your white balance changes in camera. So I'm sure most of you will know what white balance is and what it does, but just to make sure we're all on the same page before we start talking about this, I'm gonna give a very quick explanation of what white balance is in your camera. So let's start with some values. Let's try 5500 Kelvin, which is roughly daylight, and we measure the temperature of light in Kelvin. So 5500 would usually denote normal daylight outdoors, uh, that would be around the color temperature of, of normal sunlight. And then let's say 8,000 Kelvin up here. This would be more like, say, blue hour. Before the sun rises, there's kind of that blue cast of the light outside. It's very cool. And let's do 3,000. So 3,000, 3,200, something like that, usually is denoting tungsten light. So this is that kind of indoor lighting. You'll get that very warm, yellowy orangey light you'd often find inside. And all of this is obviously on a spectrum, and keeps going and keeps going both ways. Now, you'll know that if you look at this piece of paper outdoors on a sunny day, it will appear white like it does now because I've got this piece of paper being lit over there by a daylight balanced 5,500, 5,600 uh, Kelvin bulb, which means this paper should look pretty white, pretty neutral. But if I took this piece of paper outside in that cool blue hour before the sun rises, this piece of paper would appear quite cool and blue. And if I took it indoors into a room where it was lit by tungsten lights, like little side table lamps or something that were warmer in temperature, this piece of paper might appear quite yellow or even orange. Now what your camera's doing, I've just got this little strip here which I've made uh, with some watercolors. What your camera's doing when you tell it and you set your white balance, is you're saying, for example, that if I took this white piece of paper into whatever situation you're going into, you still want this piece of paper to look white. You don't want it to be cool and you don't want it to be warm. You don't want it to look blue because it's in blue out. You don't want it to look yellow because it's being lit by tungsten lights. And so you're setting your white point in your white balance. So if I set my white point of 5,500, 5,600, something like that for daylight, Everything above that color value in terms of this Kelvin number, if it's a higher number, it's going to appear cooler to the camera. Everything below that value is going to appear warmer. Now, if I slide this down to the left here, if I walk into a tungsten lit room and everything is yellowy orangey because of those tungsten lights, and I tell the camera, listen, I want this white piece of paper, I want the white point to still look white in that situation, and I set it to those tungsten lights, that's my white point. Then what would happen is every value above that would appear cooler and every value below that point, that 3000, 3200, whatever your tungsten light is, would appear warmer. And you, some of you will have shot in a tungsten lit room where there was still daylight coming in as well, but you've set the white balance to tungsten and you will have noticed that the daylight coming in through the window, if you set the white balance over here, would have appeared quite blue and very cool. Now, you could do the same thing with blue hour. If you're shooting outside in blue hour, it's a very cool early morning, very crisp. You decide you want to set your white point 
to that color value, to that blue out. So this white piece of paper still looks white. It doesn't look blue like it does to your eye. That would mean that every value above that Kelvin number would be a cool, and every value below that Kelvin number, including this daylight white balance, would appear warm, yellowy, orangey, or somewhere on that spectrum. So what you're doing when you set the white balance in your camera is you're telling the camera, listen, wherever I put this value, if I put it up here at 6,000 or 4,000, you're saying wherever I place this, I want a white piece of paper to look white, not cool, not warm, and everything above that will be cool, and everything below that will be warm. So with that in mind, let me try and explain to you why I always leave my camera on 5,500 Kelvin or, or daylight balance. It might be 5,600 Kelvin, somewhere around there though. And the reason I do that is because I, for the sort of shooting that I do, which is a lot to do with out and about, on the street, in scenes out in the real world, I want things to look like they did when I came across that scene. In which case, I want tungsten lights, like the lights in the scene, to look like they do to my eye. And to my eye, they look warm. They look yellow, they look orange. If I let my camera decide how this scene should look and left it on auto white balance, let me just grab this little eyedropper tool. It doesn't exactly work like this, but you'll get an idea. If I click on, say, the white wall back here, my camera might decide to do something like this. It would try and neutralize some of that color. It would try and cool it off because it would say there's too much warmth in this image. It shouldn't look like this. So we're going to make a white piece of paper look like a white piece of paper. But look, I've completely lost the mood of the scene. But if I shoot tungsten lights like this at 5500 Kelvin, at daylight balance, it looks like this, a beautiful warmly lit scene at night, which is what I saw on the day. Let's take this shot for an example. I shot this at blue hour in Whitby on a, on a very cold winter evening. And again, I shot it, you can see over here, as shot of 5,500 Kelvin. And the reason for that is, is because I wanted this scene to look blue, because that's what it looked like to my eye. If I allow my camera, in this case, to choose the white balance, if I grab this little eyedropper tool again, if it tried to neutralize the cool tones in this image, it might have done something like this. Now, for me, that completely ruins the image. It takes out what it felt like to be there. It's grayed off the sky and it's made those lights quite warm. But to me, that's not what it looked like to my eye. And if I shoot at daylight white balance, even in blue hour, it makes it look like blue hour, like it did to my eye when I was standing on that pier. Here's another example of a shot I took on exactly the same evening when I was walking back to my car past the Abbey on the right hand side. There was one street light, one tungsten street light off in the distance. And as people were walking away, also towards the car parks around the corner, they were backlit by this light and created some beautiful silhouettes through that mist. Now again, this is a very orange, very warm scene because I shot it at 5,500 Kelvin. I shot it at daylight white balance because I wanted this to look like it looked to my eye and this light was very warm to my eye. Again, if the camera decided to white balance this image, it might have done something like this. Now, you know, you get your blue sky in the background and it tries to neutralize this light so a white piece of paper would look white under that light, but that's not what it looked like to my eye. That light did look very warm to my eye, so I shot it at daylight white balance, and then this is the effect I get, which to me is a far more pleasing and more accurate image to what I actually saw. Now, for the sake of fairness, I have to say that sometimes I will still tweak my white balance because maybe the scene is just too strong with whatever I'm looking at. And this is a good example. This was a scene I came across in London, beautiful tungsten lit scene in a pub where you've got this lady inside and the guy outside and they're having a moment where they're just kissing through the window. It's a fun little moment. But in this case, I felt like that tungsten light is slightly too strong. It's a very strong yellow orange wash over the entire image. But raw files have a ton of latitude. So even though I shot it at 5500 still, because I always want my starting point to be as close to what my eye actually saw on the day or the evening in question, I can still pull that white balance afterwards and not really lose anything in the image. And I, it doesn't need a lot. I'd probably just dial it back maybe that much, just to back the intensity of that orange down. I still want to start at 5500 and then just pull it back a little bit. But if I let my camera decide what to do with this image, with auto white balance, it might have done something like this. And for me, that loses the warmth of the scene on that evening. It's, it's trying to correct too much and it's killing some of the atmosphere of that image. 
and I probably put it somewhere at about, I don't know, 4,200-ish. I want the warmth. I want the feeling of what it was like to be there on that cold night and that warm interior of the pub lit by those beautiful tungsten lights. When it comes to filming, it's the same thing. I mean, if you take this scene here, which you're very used to seeing on this channel, you can see three colors of light in this scene. You've got a warm practical light off to this side, which is just a side table light. I have a cool light on the right hand side, which is just the backlight coming in off the television. And I'm being lit by a 5500 Kelvin light that's lighting me off to my left hand side slightly above. Those are the three colors of light in this scene. But if I let my camera's auto white balance decide how to color this scene, it may decide that this warm light on my left hand side is too strong. So it might decide to try and cool this shot off. In which case for me, it would lose that feeling of you and me sitting late night talking in my lounge, which is the mood I'm going for. Or it might decide that the blue light off to my right hand side is too strong and it would try and warm the image up. In which case it would lose the color contrast for me and probably warm the skin tones up too much and I wouldn't have good skin tones and the image would be just oversaturated and wouldn't look the way that I wanted it to. I've been deliberate about how I've lit this scene. I want the warm practical on this side lighting me slightly from behind in the background. I want the cool one on the opposite side to give a bit of color contrast and I've made sure to light myself with 5500 Kelvin daylight balanced light to make sure that my skin tones are good coming out of that cool warm background mix. And I don't want to roll the dice letting the camera's auto white balance decide how it wants to treat the colors in this scene. It's a deliberate setup. I know I want it on 5500 Kelvin because that's the light that's lighting my skin tones and I want to keep the warm and cool mix in the background as they appear to my eye. I don't want it to change. Let me make two points in defense of my slightly unorthodox approach of always leaving my camera in daylight white balance. And the first is this, that the vast majority of color film stocks through history have been daylight white balanced. And we've been happy to run around for over a century capturing the world and sharing it with each other in daylight white balance. We like the look of it. And even now in the modern era, we're now trying to harken back to film and recreate the look of those sorts of film stocks in our images. And secondly, and I know it's not actually this simple, but the way I think about it is our eyes are daylight white balanced. And that's why to us, white paper looks whitest when it's being hit by light in that 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin range. It's true that our eyes are really clever and they will do a little bit of adjusting, but the fact still remains, if I walk into a tungsten lit room at night, even if I've been there for a few hours and I pull out a white piece of paper, it will still appear quite yellowy or orangey under those sorts of lighting conditions. So in my mind, that means that if 5500 Kelvin is around what my eye sees, where warm light is warm and cool light is cool, that's what my camera needs to be at if I want it to see the way that I see. But let me also give you some arguments against this way of shooting, just to be fair. If I walk into that same tungsten lit room and I want good color separation, I'm not going to get it in that space at daylight white balance because there's an overall warm color cast to the entire room. That will mean things like if someone's wearing a blue sweater, it might appear quite muddy brown in tungsten light because that warm light combines with the blue and turns it into something a lot duller. If I want colors to separate back out again, I will have to adjust my camera's white balance to match the white balance of the room. In this case, you'll have to shift your camera's white balance down to 3200 or somewhere around there, or just set it to auto white balance and let your camera work it out so that it removes that color cast, white looks white again, and colors will separate back out. But of course, the trade-off is you're going to lose that warm evening glow of the scene, which personally is something I don't often want to do. If you're a wedding photographer, for example, you're often going to walk into rooms where you have no control over the lighting, but you still want good skin tones on your subjects. You want the colors of the clothes to be accurate, especially that white of the wedding dress. And in your case, you are going to have to play with your white balance, either manually setting it to match the color of lighting in the room, or just switching it to auto white balance and letting it work it out for you because you just don't have time to be manually adjusting that as you go. In that sort of circumstance, it makes a ton of sense. 
Similarly, if you're a portrait photographer and for some unknown reason you walk into a space where you have to make a portrait but there's only tungsten light available, if you want good skin tones and you don't want a stylized portrait, you're going to have to set your camera's white balance to match the scene, either dialing it into 3200 or setting it to auto white balance. But for me, that would be a last resort. I would first want to find a better quality and better color of light to light my subject with than available tungsten light. But if you're a street photographer, especially those of you who walk around making images at night and you have your camera set to auto white balance, do you know what it's doing? Are you okay with the fact that it's often going to be cooling down those warm tungsten lit interiors? If that's what you're looking for, then great. But maybe think about why you would be doing that. Is that your choice or a choice that the camera is making? Personally, I want to preserve a lot of those natural warmer tones that nighttime photography in cities gives you. Similarly, if you're a landscape photographer who uses auto white balance in your camera, you have to ask yourself, do you want your camera trying to cool off a warm sunset that you see in front of you? Or trying to warm up that crisp color of blue hour before the sun rises? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't, but I think you have to decide for yourself and you make the decision. You be aware of what your camera is trying to do to the colors of the scene in front of you and make sure it's what you intend for the shot. Like all of us, I work with my colors in post with the RAW files or I grade the footage that I film. But in my mind, I want to start as a base level with footage and images that looked as close to what my eyes saw on that day or that night as humanly possible. As with anything in photography, this isn't the right way to do things. It's just my chosen way to do it. And I thought by sharing it with you, you might find it interesting and it would get you thinking about white balance and what it does to your images. But if you're somebody who uses auto white balance in your camera and it works for you, don't change a thing. I mean that. Just be aware of what white balance is and how it might be affecting your images. And if you're somebody who manually changes the white balance depending on the scene that you're presented with, good for you. It sounds like you're already very aware of what white balance does and how it affects your images. So keep going. But maybe you've been struggling with this idea of white balance and you're not getting the colors you want from your images. Maybe give this a go. Put your camera in daylight white balance and leave it. Shoot the world and see what happens. Like I said, it's not right for every genre of photography in every situation, but it certainly works well for the way that I shoot. I wish you the best of luck. Just a couple of things before I go, and the first is to say that there are still copies of all three volumes of my Parable magazine available. I'm really enjoying producing these. They are images and writing around a particular theme. The first is window light. The second is my Namibia story going and taking portraits with a Himba a few years ago. And the third is called Keeping Faith which is about my journey with the church and how I left being a pastor and, and ended up in the job that I am now and how I think about faith, all featuring images around those themes. And a lot of you have been enjoying these, have been asking me where I get these printed. I use a company called Mixum and I've got a discount code for you to use as well. The first 50 people to use the discount code will get 5% off their order. I will leave the link and the discount code down in the description below. And then we have our week-long retreat coming up at the end of June, beginning of July in Tuscany and Italy. We are almost full. We only have a couple of places left, but if you would really like to come and you act quickly, I think you'll be able to get a spot. I will leave a link so you can go and see all the details for that down below and you can book your place. And then lastly, thanks again to Squarespace who sponsored this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them as my website of choice for over a decade now. One of the things I've really appreciated about Squarespace is how easy it was to set up a store and sell products from my website. I mean, I sell my Parable magazines, the physical and the digital versions, digital collections, physical collections, and my audiobook, all from my store. And that store was so easy to put together, to load up images of the products, to write descriptions and set prices, and I can clearly see when orders are coming in and get sales reports on how things are going. And when customers order, they're sent automated emails to let them know that their item is on the way. It couldn't be easier. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.